very excited to be here with you today. I don't get to see you guys very often because I'm down here and you guys are over here. And so I know most of you just through my morning duty I have or with Caroline. I know a lot of you. There's some of you. If you look familiar, I might not remember your name, but I know a lot of you. Raise your hand if you knew or you know that I have a daughter in here. I think most of us knew that. And so her name is Junie. She's in Mrs. Baker's class. I have another daughter who's not in school yet. Her name is Julian. And hopefully she'll be here either next year or the year after. We're not sure yet. But um, as Mrs. Mary said, my name is Mr. Ison, and I teach second grade down here. And I would like to open with a word of prayer. Can you guys bow your heads? Lord, we come before you this morning, and we thank you so much for this day and this time of chapel. I pray, Lord, that you would just, um, you would work and move right here and right now, Lord, and that you would speak to us. We would have ears to listen, and we would obey, and that we pray we would learn more about you today. In your name we pray. Amen. All right. Well, today I am going to be telling you about a song. As you guys have been hearing all about songs, um, a lot of old hymns that we've talked about. When I was young, I went to church, and we did a lot of old hymns, and so I know a lot of them. But one of my absolute favorite hymns is called, How Great Thou Art. Now, we have these two words in that title, Thou Art. And these two words are words we don't use very often anymore. But it basically just means, the word thou just means you, and art just means are. And so another way to say that, that song title would be how great you are. Can you raise your hand and tell me who do you think we're talking about when we say how great you are? What do you think? Yeah, who do you think we're talking about when we say that? Yeah, we're talking about God when we say how great you are. We're talking about God and we're singing songs of praise to God. And today I really want to focus on the greatness of God, okay? Because God is great. And I don't know if you remember last week who our speaker was. Does anybody remember who our speaker was last week? How about way in the back? Yeah, Miss Brock spoke to us. And do you remember the song she sang? At the very beginning, and it said, Our God is so big, so strong, and so mighty, there's nothing our God cannot do. Do you guys remember that? And she she changed a word in there. She changed it to great. And I, I want to know if we can sing that again today, just, just the first part of it. Can you guys sing that with me? And we're going to sing. You can't? Well, maybe the rest of us can, and maybe when you remember, you can sing with us, okay? And instead of, we're going to change the word just like she did to great. Are you guys ready? God is so great, so strong and so mighty, there's nothing our God cannot do. Our God is so great, so strong and so mighty, there's nothing our God cannot do. All right, so we're talking about the greatness of God, okay? And so I want you to look at the picture here and just... That hand, you know, and it represents how big our God is and how small we are and just the greatness of God, okay? Uh, go ahead and go to the next slide there. So, have you ever been outside and you can see a storm coming? So you're standing outside and you look up in the clouds and you can see the clouds are getting darker and darker. And as they roll in, it's just, sometimes it can be kind of scary even. Or maybe you can hear thunder, or you can see the lightning flashing off in the distance. And as you're standing there, you can actually see it getting closer and closer. And there's sometimes, has this ever happened to you, where you're standing there watching the storm roll in, and you can hear the rain before it's actually raining where you're standing. Has that ever happened to you? No, that's happened to me before. It's really, really cool. I'll be standing there watching this storm roll in and I can hear the rain getting closer and closer until finally where I am, it finally starts you know, downpouring. 
And so that's kind of what our story's about today. Um, you can go ahead and go to the next slide. Our story starts with a man by the name of Carl Boberg. Now, Carl Boberg was from a country called Sweden, and he did not speak English. He spoke a language called Swedish. So if we were to talk to somebody who spoke Swedish, we probably wouldn't be able to understand them because you know they don't speak English. But Carl, he was walking home one day and he got caught up in this storm. And he was like, oh, I better get home. I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get flat. And before I continue with the story of Carl Boberg, you know, it, he, he, wrote a, he wrote a poem that got turned into a song, and I want to play part of that for you today. And then I want to continue with Carl and, and how this song came to be. Okay, can I play a song for you? Have you ever heard that saying, it's raining as hard as cats and dogs outside? Well, I think on this day, it was probably more like goats and squirrels. I mean, it was just a downpour. And so he got soaking wet. And he gets home, and he opens his window. And, he, and kind of the opposite. Remember at the beginning I told you how you can see the storm coming? Well, it's kind of the opposite of that. He's standing in his bedroom, and he opens his window, and he sees the storm leaving. You know, he, would, he had just been in it. He had just been standing in it. He's soaking wet, but he can see the clouds rolling away, and he can see the storm leaving. And it's no longer raining, raining where he is, but he can see it raining out there. And so it, the storm is leaving, and he hears God's creation just come alive because the birds start whistling again the bugs start chirping again and he can hear god's creation you know when it's pouring down rain you don't really hear birds singing because they're trying to take cover just like we are and so god's creation starts coming alive again and he is struck in that moment of the greatness of god and these words come to him now, remember I said, he didn't speak English. He spoke Swedish. So he wrote a poem, and it was, it was titled, O Stor Gud, which if you were to translate that into English means, O Great God. When he wrote the song, he, he wrote it in, I think, if I remember correctly, it was like 1885. So like 150 years ago, 140 years ago. 
and he wanted to get the word out, you know, get this poem out. And so this circulated and it got translated into the German language and the Russian language. And finally in 1925, it got translated into English where we could understand it. And have you ever heard of a man named Billy Graham? He was a famous minister that would travel all over the place and tell people about Jesus. Well, he, he would regularly have uh, people that did music for him. And one of the pre people that did the music for him heard that song and was like, oh, that's really good. And so he would travel with Billy Graham and sing this song. And so it became very popular in the Christian church. And it's, it's one of the more well-known hymns. So anyway, Carl Bober, he was struck by God's creation and he wrote this song. And when I heard the lyrics of the song, I remember sitting in church one day and was just thinking about uh, reflecting on the greatness of God. And I, I was probably about 12, 13 years old. And, and just hearing, I, I changed the words in my head because as a kid, I was like, what's this word thou and what's art? And so I was sitting in church singing that song and instead of singing how great thou art, I was singing how great you are. And in that moment, being about 12 years old, I was struck by the greatness of God. And I started crying sitting in church because I was just struck by his greatness. But then as I was reading it, preparing for you guys, it made me think of a scripture. And I need some audience participation. And I'm going to ask Junie, could you come up here with me? I'm going to teach you, well, Junie's going to teach you three sign languages. And we're going to read a scripture. Now, come on up, Jeannie. And we're going to uh, read a scripture. And when I say these three words, I want you to use your sign language that Junie is going to teach you. Are you ready? The first sign is for the word sing. Do you remember sing? Can you show them? Okay. You guys try it with me. You hold your arm out. Bend just a little bit. You take your other arm and you kind of make like a swinging motion with your hand. And that means sing. So as we read this scripture, anytime I say the word sing, I want you to do that sign language, okay? And song too. The word sing and the word song are both in the scripture. And anytime we do sing or song, I want you to do that. The next one is Lord. Jenny, can you show them Lord? So you make an L with your hand, and it's almost like you're buckling a seatbelt. You touch your shoulder, and then you bring it down to your waist, and that means Lord. Okay? So anytime I say the word Lord, I want you to do the sign language for Lord. And then our last one is great, and it's kind of like raising the roof. So, that's what I think of. I think raise the roof. But that means great. We're going to do two pumps, and that means great. So when I say the word great in the scripture, can you guys do that for me? All right, let's practice all three again. What's the same? What's Lord? And what's great? Okay, are you ready to read the scripture with me and do our sign languages? All right. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing to the Lord. Praise his name. Proclaim his salvation day after day. Declare his glory among the nations, his marvelous deeds among all peoples. For great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. He is to be feared above all gods, for all the gods of the nations are idols. But the Lord, put your seatbelt on, the Lord made the heavens, splendor and majesty are before him, strength and glory are his sanctuary.
So we're going to go to the next slide. So as a reflection, things to think back on, we want to think about the greatness of God. Okay? And we want to look at his creation, just like when Carl opened the window and could hear those birds singing and hear those bugs chirping. He was struck by the greatness of God so that he wrote that song. And so I want us to be mindful of his creation. You know, one thing that comes to my mind when I am mindful of his creation, you know what drives me crazy? When I'm out in public and I see somebody with trash in their hand and they just throw it on the ground, do you know why that bothers me? Because God has created a beautiful earth and he has charged us to take care of it. If you have trash and you're standing in your living room, do you just throw it on the ground? Why not? Hey, let me... Let me, let me call on someone and see why not here. What, what do you think? Why wouldn't we do that? It would make our house not clean. And so when we have a lot of trash and we just throw it outside, we're making our world not clean. And God has charged us to take care of our earth. So hold on to your trash. And the next time you're close to a trash can, just put it in a trash can. Okay? So we want to be mindful of our creation that God has given us. We want to make sure we're taking care of it. We want to look at his creation and be reminded of his greatness. We want to declare his greatness. Just like it said in Psalm 96, 3, it told us in 96, 3, if I can see here, with my glasses off. I'm, I'm getting to that age, teachers, where I can't see with my glasses on anymore. All right, it says, Declare his glory among the nations, his marvelous deeds among all peoples. And so just like in 96.3, we want to declare his greatness to those around us. Did you know that when Jesus was on earth, he asked us to do something? He asked us to spread the message of the gospel and tell others about him. You know, when we go to church, that's a good thing. And when we hear about God, that's a good thing. But if we only hear about it at church, and then we go home, and we don't say anything about it, that's not a good thing. We want to tell others. We want to declare God to those around us. And the last thing that I want to reflect on is that he is worthy of our praise. If anything is worthy, it is God. God has created everything. If there's something that you worship, that's because God put it there. And instead of worshiping something, you should worship God for that thing. All right, so there's a video that I would like for you to watch. Like I told you guys, Carl wrote this in Swedish. And I found a really neat video that plays the song and there's a lady singing, and the first time, she sings it twice, and the first time she sings it, she sings it in Swedish. And then she sings it through a second time, and she sings it in English, and I would love for you guys to hear this song. Oh. 
the song. I sang it in the beginning and we heard it again. And I have the lyrics up here. And I'm wondering if you could sing it with me. If you've heard it before, maybe you can sing it with me. If you haven't heard it before, maybe you'll be able to pick up on it. And teachers, you could sing with me as well. Can we sing this together? Okay, you ready? Oh Lord my God, when I in awesome to others and tell others of your greatness. 